people just coming up to me singing. I'm so excited. Listen, I get to wear six inch heels and fringe to work every morning. So fun. Maybe you can tell Mario, like, I, I used to think I was Slater. And I'm like, Dad, don't ever do that in public. Dustin, we're discussing, but I just don't know yet. In terms of Easter eggs for the original show, like that was one of the most fun things about this. I'm just hoping over here for a, a Principal Todman and a Principal Belding reunion of the sorts. Stay uh, tuned. Ah, Bayside. <laughs> Haskidi and Alicia, you guys are really young. So I want you guys to be honest with me. When this project fell in your lap, had you heard of Saved by the Bell? Were you guys a fan of the original? Complete truthfulness, I was completely aware of the show. I had watched episodes growing up because I'd watched reruns really early in the morning on the weekends. And I distinctively remember speaking on the phone with my manager and making sure I was like, wait, is this that Saved by the Bell? Like, is it, is it something different? Like another very, like, and I was like, is it? And she was like, yes, it is. And I was like, Wow. We lived in a one like TV household. So whatever my dad watched, we watched, which was like History Channel and Saved by the Bell. And we were like, yeah, saved. Um, <laughs> literally saved by the bell. I had not watched it. I knew the weight of it, but I did not watch it religiously like a lot of people do. I was a baby born in 2001. I was watching Rick and Josh. I hate to say it. I hate to oust myself like that. I'm a fetus. And I did not watch the show, but I'm proud that I was aware of it. So at least give me credit for that. <laughs> I was already a full-fledged cranky adult by the time <laughs> Saved by the Bell showed up. They, they gave me this job and I went back and, and looked at some of them. I thought the show was totally charming. I was like, what do you need to re remake this for? It's lovely. In your preparation for each of your roles, did you guys go back and watch old episodes? How did you react to the fashion, the acting, the characters, all of that? The fashion, I would say, spot on. Like, it's something I would wear to this day. But it brought back a lot of nostalgia because it reminded me of my childhood. We would sit around the TV and, and watch this show. And my dad really thought he was Mario Lopez. <laughs> and I think he was, yeah, he was more excited, I think, than I was. Because he was like, oh, if you book it, maybe you can tell Mario. Like, I, I used to think I was Slater. And I'm like, dad, don't ever do that in public. <laughs> I had the opportunity to actually bring my mom on set and that's when I was like, oh, don't cry. Like even just thinking about it, it's like, oh, because she, my mom is just a gem. I love her so much. Alicia, how about for you? I, I definitely did. And it just made things really surreal. You know, the fact that I was going to be walking through those Bayside lockers or like really sitting in the max were the moments for me. And me and Askidi would have these looks and like talks to each other all the time girl like this yeah. is happening so watching back it felt really wacky and, and crazy being like oh my god i've sat in that max and this is something that i watched and now i'm sitting it's next like to Mario it was on tv face. but now it's here although that show was so fun and so wonderful and served so many people this like warm comfort it also was full of a lot of ignorances and a lot of things that showed how not evolved the times were so what's amazing about our show is we take everything good from the original, but we have those top level conversations and we do evolve, which I think makes for a smarter, more enjoyable piece of television. I actually watched a few episodes. I was enormously impressed with Dennis because it's actually a very tricky job because the, the sweet spot on the show is this gaggle of kids who are tight friends. And um, there is this referee walking around on the field who gets put into the dunk tank every now and then. It's sort of a tightrope act, and Dennis was incredibly good at it. Do you want to reach out to him to see like what well, his feelings I are? Well, I can't, there's, there's spoilers involved, so I can't really speak. I always get in trouble. And you're okay. just, I know, Deirdre, I can see that you, there's trouble in your eyes. I don't like it. I'm just hoping over here for a, a Principal Todman <laughs> and a Principal Belding reunion of the sorts. Stay uh, tuned. Okay. okay, I like that tease. I know it's confirmed that we have Lark Voorhees back mm -hmm. for an episode. Is there any chance that we would maybe see Dustin Diamond? We definitely hear about Screech, like where there's jokes about what he's doing now and there's some Easter eggs about uh, about his life. You know, it was a hard thing this, this season. It's just 10 episodes. And in addition to trying to find places 
to use the original cast and felt more organic because they're already parents of um, the students. It's like, you really want to spend the majority of your time with these new characters. As a fan of the show, sure, I'd love to see Screech and I, I would be open to it um, if there was another season. I'm one of a whole group of great producers and we're discussing, but I just don't know yet. It depends on the storylines and how they play out and all of that, but I, I wish Dustin nothing but the best. Um, I just haven't seen him for a, a lot of years, but I do wish him the best. He was always kind to me. So there's a little invitation out there that's waiting. We'll see. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I absolutely screamed when I saw in the trailer that you are going to be revisiting the iconic <laughs> caffeine pill storyline. Are those caffeine pills? At first, they're so exciting. And then it gets even more exciting. But after that, it gets so scary. And in the end, you ruin your girl group shot at a recording contract. What? That is such an iconic moment in pop culture history. How do you react when you see like memes about it or, or things just, you know, in the lexicon? Or people just coming up to me singing, I'm so excited. <laughs> yes, or I'm so scared. Uh, you know what? I love it. I love that people embraced that. I mean, we really went for it. I also have a good sense of humor about myself. Um, but at the time, you know, Mark Paul and I played it for real. We were using our guts, you know, and our heart and we trusted each other as actors. We were like best friends and so in real life too. So we really felt safe enough to go there because that episode really needed it. I think that's why we're so excited to, there we go, that to bring it to, you know, bring this show as a gift back to anyone that grew up watching it so it's nostalgic, mm -hmm. but also to a new fresh audience because the show is more progressive. Um, it obviously maintains so much of why people loved it. Mm -hmm. So we, we didn't want to stray from that for the OG fans. One of the, the most exciting parts of this show, at least for me as like a pop culture super fan, were all the little Easter eggs that you sprinkled in and all the amazingly topical um, celebrity references. I got DJ Khaled's baby to make you a playlist. I have a Kardashian coming at lunch. Who, Rob? Shut up. He's still in their family. Can you walk me through a few that are your favorite or that were, um, I don't know, the most fun to inject into this series? In terms of Easter eggs for the original show, like. It, that was one of the most fun things about this. Like really looking at spots where you could be like, oh, I, I bet we can get the exact guitar that Zach had when he was in Zach Attack. Or we can put Slater's wrestling singlet up on his wall and it's always there. Or the song that's playing at the max is the song that Zach put subliminal messages in in the one episode. Because Franco worked on the original show, he would just be like, oh, I have a I have a jacket from Malibu Sands. Wow. God, so you sourced a lot of original props and, and mementos. Some, yes. Yeah, there's a there's a photo of Kelly that's in Kelly and Zach's bedroom. Wow. Yeah, there were a lot of times I was like, let me check my attic. I might have that. You only know how Bayside works for kids like you. Hot kids. Privileged kids. Privileged kids. I really applaud the show because it has absolutely prioritized diversity and representation. What does it mean to be on a show that is so inclusive? It means the world to me simply because representation, especially for young adults, trying to find, you know, where they fit in. It's so important, like just to have someone to look up to and say, oh, wow, this person looks like me. They did it. Um, I can do it too. But the fact that we have such a diverse cast that, you know, when you tune in, you kind of feel included in, in this show and you feel represented. And especially for like Latinas, you see Daisy in a different light versus this drama cop series, you know, just the girl from the Bronx who probably got knocked up and doesn't really have a future. Daisy is like, no, I have a future. I have a voice. I'm going to use it. When I read the character breakdown with for Daisy, I related so much to that. I feel like I always have to prove myself because I'm Latina and because I have curves or because I speak a certain way or because I grew up a certain way. It meant everything to get to play this role. I mean, it was such a cool opportunity to get to portray a character like this that it wasn't all about our gender identity. I think that's what's so important about representation now and what we look to for the work that we need to do for representation in the future is 
getting to have uh, these types of characters, but not making it all about X, all about race, all, all about their gender, all about their sexual orientation. So getting to tell a genuine, well-written storyline about a person who's a mean girl, who's a fashionista, who's a bad belief, but then also <laughs> happens to be transgender is the coolest thing in the world. I'm gonna be honest, 10 episodes, it's just frankly not enough. What do you think about a season two? Have you heard anything? What do you want to see happen? It's, it's a really bad thing in my business. I've become interested in this show. <laughs> you know? You're and a fan, yeah. Yeah. I can't quite remember a, a, a job that I've been on in the last 10, 20 years where I'm, I, would, I would go to the set and watch when I wasn't in the scene, which was very unusual for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm interested in these kids. I really am. There's just so many stories to tell about them. 10 is not enough, I agree. I, I, I think we were, ju were just getting started. It's about uh, privileged kids who sort of need to meet kids who are different than them and, and um, you know, and how these new kids coming in sort of shape them and vice versa. And so, you know, when you have a show that has these two things in conflict, it does feel like it can go on and on uh, for for a bunch of seasons. I green light season two, that's it, if you ask me. <laughs> we are manifesting, praying that we can have a season two and, um, you know, speaking to what Haskidi said, hopefully continuously uplifting the communities that we're a part of. But we are in, in the dark, we don't know anything for sure, but it'd be beautiful to know that people enjoy the show and want to see more. So hopefully that is in the future for us.